We'd like to welcome you to our current event in weekly Bible study for July 5th, 2015. And today, just a just a, like about a 10 10 page study, just going to cover some of the current events that are going on right now. Um, I've been spending more time in kind of preparation, kind of getting my affairs in order, that type of stuff um, <clears throat> for, uh, I think, what we're on the what's on the near horizon here, a lot of the stuff that we've been covering, um, some of it that we'll be covering today, things of that nature. So just starting out, <clears throat> Malachi 3.16 says, this is a really cool verse, uh, through, actually this is 3.16 through 18, says, Then they that feared the Lord <clears throat> spake often one to another. So communicating with other people that fear the Lord should be something that's done and that's kind of what i feel like that this ministry is about that these audios in particular are about then they that feared the lord spake often one to another and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the lord <clears throat> the lord if you fear the Lord, you're going to be humbled before the Lord. And, and, and that's who the Lord looks to. Them that are of a humble and contrite spirit and trembleth at my word, according to Isaiah. So, um, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. So, there's also protection involved. So, <clears throat> uh, so, a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. Okay. And again, that would be, I think, in prayer and just throughout the day, that type of thing. Thinking on the Lord's name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. So serving the Lord is <clears throat> very important. <laughs> On a lot of different levels. But that's that's a really amazing uh, couple verses there. And then the last verse. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So I think that also you, you would look at the pretenders. The ones that say they're serving God. Like let's say the... The 501c3 clergy response team yoked up with FEMA and Homeland Security that, that are literally spying on their congregates behind their own back and getting ready to sell them out and, and probably selling them out as it is, turning over lists of names and things of this nature. I mean, that is that is somebody that says they're serving the Lord, but actually they're serving Satan. You know, So God is, is going to discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. You, you, you can't get anything by God. There, there is no secret um, that will not be, or that it is not already revealed, revealed to God, no matter how much you try to conceal it. So, <laughs> I, I just thought that that was a really neat um, set of verses to cover. And we're going to be covering more scripture. Uh, but the first report is a look at what is coming and why we need to prepare now. Why this... This is why you want to be where everyone else isn't during a meltdown crisis or riot. Now, I did a study, um, oh, it was probably a couple of years ago, and um, it was on when the, when the, um, what's going to go on in the cities when things get bad. And um, it, it's kind of like one of my end time, current end time uh, preparedness audio studies that I did. And so you can access that at contendingfortruth.com. Okay, I just added that in. It's the end time preparedness prepper mega, prepper mega study. And it's when the uh, when you click on it, there's a part one and there's a part two. And the first one, when the music stops, how America's cities may explode in violence. And it, it's kind of pertinent to what we're going to be talking about here in the first part. Um, this starts out by saying, I want everybody to take a look, good look at the picture above and those seen throughout this article. And again, obviously, I know you can't see it, but uh, it's a picture of people going through dumpsters over in Greece. 
Those are not homeless people scavenging in garbage bins for food and clothes and anything they may need to survive. They are Greek citizens, rooting through rubbish to grab discarded items that they can sell or eat. So it's already getting that bad already. Annalise Sterry from the Gloucester Food Bank said, quote, This is not a surprise to us at all. It is not uncommon for this to happen. Well, I guess in that environment it's not, when you have economic collapse. Uh, we have people coming to use, meaning coming to use our services, who have not eaten for days. We have just one where a mother came in with her eight-year-old. She was complaining of pains because she hadn't eaten anything. And I, I thought this is a good time to, and I don't know if I've covered these before, I might have before, but um, this is just a little mini study on having pity on the poor. And just some Bible verses regarding it. Proverbs 9, 17. He that hath pity on the poor lendeth to the Lord. How cool is that? It's like God gave you everything you have anyway, right? He even gave you the breath in your lungs. The, the roof over your head, the water that you eat, the food that you eat, the clothes on your back, the shelter, if you have a car, all of that, God gave it to you. The earth in which you, you know, <laughs> the atmosphere you breathe, all, all of that. So he that hath pity on the poor lendeth to the Lord. That's awesome. <laughs> And that which he hath given, he will pay him again. Well, you've heard that expression, you can't outgive God. And I, I believe that. I really do. I don't think you can. I've proven it many times myself. So, um, Proverbs 28, 27. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. So, in other words, there's a there's a um, aspect of provision because you've been a giving person. Okay? So, he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. So, it's like when you hide your eyes from the poor, and I understand, particularly like in America, I'm not saying that there's not scam artists on the streets. You know what I mean? Uh, I think a lot of times, particularly in big cities, you'll see that even more so. I've seen them, I've watched these guys, some of them. You really have to rely on discernment from God as far as who to give to and who don't. Taylor and I got convicted about this and we started to make up bags where like we go up to like local Hess station here and they have like you can buy like, I don't know, five or three blankets for a certain amount of money. It's really cheap. Put it in, we, we put it in a, a, like a mesh bag that can be reused. And then she went up to like the dollar store and got these other little things like a whole bunch of packs of pretzels and a whole bunch of and little food stored and then little personal hygiene stuff. And all of that stuff, and then always we put in tracks and wrap it all up, or, or we kind of like take the 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 the, ro the uh, little rope on the drawstring bag and kind of wrap it around there and tie it. And then just if you see one of these people and you're convicted, I just reach down, I have one waiting, and you just give it to them, you know. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying it might be an idea. And and um and again, you, you use your discernment regarding that because i've seen i've seen a lot of scammers too it's obvious that they're scammers literally there's some in charlotte where it's almost like you could tell they're all working together they take shifts they're one of them might be the one that's like ruler over the other ones i've seen that um and it's it's a total racket they're going to take whatever you know whatever money and use it to buy drugs and that's why i typically uh, if I give any money, uh, I'll, I would rather give goods or foods or, or tracks and blankets and stuff like that because they're not going to be able to go and, you know, turn that into, into a crack hit, most likely, you know, or something like that. I'm not saying they all are, but it is it is a matter of discernment in that regard. And, and just pray that the Lord leads you in that particular way. Um, so he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. So that's you know that's like a warning proverbs 21 3 whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor he also shall cry himself but shall not be heard and so i think that we and even globally to a certain extent excuse me are, are getting we're are, are on the verge of of a lot of people crying and not being heard because the Bible talks about he that showeth no mercy shall obtain no mercy. You know, and if you don't forgive others, you're not going to obtain 
forgiveness. So you, you want to try to be um, Christ-like in that regard. Next verse, Proverbs 29, 7. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth, n regardeth not to even know it. I put in the word even. Um, so the wicked don't want to hear about it. They don't care. It's all about them, 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 me, me, me. And, um, but the righteous considereth the cause of the poor. And then Psalm 68, verse 10. O, thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. Now think about this. Think Lazarus and the rich man. Okay, Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom, which is where people that were, I don't, I don't know if you want to call them saved at the time. This is before Jesus Christ actually went to the cross, you know, paid our sin debt, that's, that type of thing, died for our sins. That was before that. So they went to Abraham's bosom prior to that time. Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom, paradise. The rich man went to hell. Okay. Thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. So see, that's when Lazarus got to experience the goodness of the Lord when he was in Abraham's bosom. Before that, when he was on earth, he was just eating from the crumbs from the rich man's table, if he could even get that. So that's, I, I thought that verse kind of related there. Uh, next verse, 2 Corinthians 9, 9. As it is written, he hath dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Um, in other words, a righteous man has dispersed abroad. Okay, and that could also be in line with like missions. Dispersed to the poor abroad. Okay, uh, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. It's, it's a lasting legacy when you give, um, and not to be seen of all men, because if, if, you, if you give to be seen of all men, verily you have your reward. This was what the Bible says. You know, those that, that give to be seen among men. That Jesus Christ talked about that. So you don't want to, you, 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 I, I preferably you let not your right hand know what your left hand is doing. That's like the, the preferable way biblically but god god knows your heart sometimes that's not possible it's it's not sometimes it's you know it's right to give in a particular situation and you know it's impossible at that point to not be seen it's just what is your heart motivation and in and, and god knows your heart so um kind of interesting and then lastly just where it, this portion of scripture uh, matthew 25 thir verses 31 through 46 Reading, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set hit the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For when, for I was an hungered, Okay, meaning I was hungry, and you gave me meat, meaning food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Or when saw we thee, a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto the least, unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. So, essentially giving, and particularly giving to other Christians, I think is the, is one of the high, or, or you know, the people that are, are um, poor and in, in, in downtrodden in, in in these types of things and a lot of times this could lead somebody to salvation when they saw you know christ-like charity extended to them okay could lead them to the lord so but when you do that it's like you've done it unto jesus christ yourself okay so that's that's an awesome thought too you know and it's just like that verse where when you when you give to the poor it's like you're lending unto the lord okay so then it goes on conversely then it says then he shall send to them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels 
for I was in hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. And, and a lot of times people will say, well, you know, what is, you know, you can, you can define salvation, but then you say, okay, what is the fruit? You shouldn't, Jesus Christ said, you'll know them by their fruit. Okay. Well, the, what I just went over is the fruit of a righteous saved person. Now, if that person was doing that purely thinking they're earning their way into heaven, like, like, let's say a Catholic would. Okay, good. trusting in the seven sacraments and all of this other garbage and praying to the saints and all these other idols and then thinking and, and let's say they did all of these wonderful works, but they did it thinking that earn it literally thinking they're earning their way to heaven. Well, in that particular case, all our righteousness are as filthy rags as the Bible talks about in Isaiah. So that would be a filthy rag. Okay, in God's eyes, you do it through the Lord, you do it through the provision he's given you and to whom much is given, much is required. And in um, a lot of times when you do give, the Lord will give you more. And it's always, it's kind of like a big test, you know, are you going to continue in righteousness? Are you going to continue in goodness in this type of thing? So it says, um, depart from me, cursed and everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and, and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered or a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Um, and, and again, this could be a, Christ, a person calling themselves a Christian that had no compassion. And had no compassion for, for the poor, had no compassion for their brethren, had just, you know, they were apathetic. They were, it was all about them, you know. Um, so then it goes on to say, then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. Now, this isn't meaning you're earning your way to heaven. Okay, but this is fruit of a righteous saved person. Done with the right heart, obviously. They're not doing it to be seen among men. They're not doing it thinking they're earning their way to heaven. It's just a natural byproduct of the Holy Spirit living inside you, producing fruit. Fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance, you know, these types of things. And then this. It's just, it's evidence. And then if you, if you, if you stray, then whom the Lord loveth, he also chasteneth, meaning, you know, he can punish you since you're his child. And if he be without chastisement, then you're bastards. Most likely the goats that they're talking about here, if they said they were saved, God probably tried to chasten them at some point, you know, and, and, or maybe tried to, to get them on the right path, maybe actually so that they would get saved. They might've just been, you know, believing in some kind of delusion um and um uh so you know said some little prayer a, a ton of years ago and then lived like the devil afterward had no real conviction of sin you know never you know and lived like the devil had no chastening on them well then they're bastards they, they weren't ever saved because whom the lord loveth the also chasteneth and that's another evidence of salvation okay uh, to correct you, to bring you back onto the proper path. When, when the prodigal son left and, and he, he spent all the substance of riotous living, he had to hit rock bottom. I mean, totally rock bottom. And that was a form of God's chastening to actually bring him back to the father. Okay. But he did come back. He did come back to the father. Okay. And that's what matters. It matters how you end. Not so how much you are in the, in the middle or at the beginning. It, it matters how it turns out. Now, it matters, I mean, obviously, at the beginning and in the middle, but ultimately how you cross the finish line is, is really the most, the most important part, you know? Okay, so let's go further here. Then, just kind of along these lines of what we're talking about today, and I've, I've went over these verses, but it's probably been a, a well over a year, maybe two, preparation regarding the end times. Okay, because we're talking about Greece, 
we're talking about all of these things that that could potentially be happening greece potentially being the the, the first domino to fall in some kind of global cascading um financial meltdown we, we talk about the world the the united states losing the world reserve currency status which is really the only thing that's been propping it up for for many decades um considering we print all of our money out of thin air there's nothing backing it we're in debt up to our eyeballs china owns all the debt then china comes out and they're actually putting out billboards saying that the one world reserve currency now will be the renminbi the yuan renminbi not the one world but the re world's reserve currency and once they get that status, there's really going to be nothing more propping up the dollar. And that's when you can expect to see the American economy truly go into free fall, most likely. Now, I'm not, I'm not any kind of economic guru or prognosticator, but from everything I've seen from people that are, that's, what, that's one of the main linchpins that could do that. So, uh, Revelation 6.5 says, And when he had opened the third seal... I heard the third beast saying, come and see. Now, we're, in, we're well into the tribulation here. Okay, we're not, we're, we're not there yet. But that's not to say there's not parts of the, the planet that aren't in, you know, obvious famine. And, you know, all the garbage that they're doing with all the weather warfare out in California that we've covered in recent studies, actually the last study, uh, they're, they're actively trying to create famine. Okay. Um, through their manipulation and weather warfare and these types of things so that there there's going to be no food okay so um and i beheld a little black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand then the next the next verse says and i heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou not see thou hurt not the oil and the wine now, you have to kind of look in uh, the context of this verse to understand this verse, Revelation 6, 6. I heard, in the midst, I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Okay, now what is the word measure mean? What does the underlying Greek define it as? A, and I may be pronouncing this wrong, a choinix which is a dry measure containing two sarotai, which is less than a quart, or as much as would support a man of moderate appetite for one day. Okay. Now, what is a penny defined there? It's not the penny you think of today. Um, that is derived from the Greek word denarion, denarion, which is a Roman silver coin in New Testament time called a denarius. It was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. See, silver, back when, when they had more, more just, uh, I, I guess you call it more weights and balances, more just forms of um, currency, where the actual currency itself was represented by either the silver or the gold content. Not like today where they printed money out of thin air off, off worthless paper dollar bills with nothing backing them. Okay. Um, that was a much more honest way to have currency, obviously, okay? Uh, a Roman silver coin in New Testament times called a denarian, it was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. From the parable of the laborers in the vineyard in the Bible, it would seem that a denarius was the ordinary pay for a day's wages. From Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 20 verses 2 through 13. So what can we, what can we derive from this? Well, in the, in the, it's going to get so bad in Revelation, okay, that, and here we have the, the, the third seal being opened and the black horse, okay, which is, um, you know, we're looking at big time famine here, that it will cost a person um, a full day's wages, okay, so you'd have to work all day, okay, to just eat for that particular day that's not including any of the other expenses you may have in life you know like any other expense that you would consider paying on a monthly basis no you would have to literally work all day just to eat for that day which is what this means a measure of wheat for a penny so if you wanted to eat something wheat based you have to work the whole day or and three measures of barley for a penny. So you have um, 
<coughs> three measures of barley, so I guess you could buy more of the barley. But it's it's warning you about what is coming. Famine is coming, okay? And particularly into the tribulation. And I, and I truly do believe leading up to that, particularly with all of this weather, warfare, uh, garbage that they are doing and that's why i say also to pray against the like these chemtrail planes and in 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 the weather warfare that they're using and um you know to potentially in as much as you have any ability to do that you know to store up some food and, and, and water and things of this nature because these days are coming it's just a matter of time now let's look at that a little bit further so if we have wisdom we should prepare like this, like God instructed Joseph to do, if we have that ability. Okay, now I'm not saying if you don't have that ability, I'm not condemning anybody. I'm just saying, if you have that ability, it wouldn't be unwise to do such a thing. Okay, Genesis 41, verse 34 through 36. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. I mean, I went up to like Big Lots the other day. I mean, that's like one of the cheapest places you can buy. They got a whole organic section now. All this organic food that you can buy for like, I mean, it's so cheap, you know. Maybe it's a little bit nearer its, its expiration or whatever, but a lot of times these things still keep like, they keep a long time after that. And you could literally eat organic, you know, for like a fraction of the cost that it would cost you if you went to like a health food store. And and I know that if you're trying to eat organic, that's impossible to to do just going to a place like Big Lots. But you could you could definitely supplement a good amount of, of, of food. At some of these other places, some of these discount stores that literally get organic foods in, you know. So, I don't, anyway, um, let's go further here. Uh, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine. Isn't that weird? If, if you believe in a seven-year tribulation, well, it's most likely going to be seven years of a lot of famine. It's not going to be seven years of plenty, okay? You're going to have God's judgment on the planet. You're going to, you know what I mean? And so, um, looking at what they're already trying to do with the famine, with the weather warfare, they're trying to, you know, drive food prices up and take, and, and they're going to be using that as a control mechanism to manipulate the the populace at large to do whatever they say to give up liberty freedom and everything else just for food and water that's this is the primary mechanism how they're going to accomplish that is through food and water they're drying up they're trying to, to um dry up all the reservoirs they're trying to 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 create famine because you know if you don't have the the water to water the plants you can't grow the plants and so satan is trying actively to already do this they're they're taking you know the corn that's grown it's all gmo garbage that's a whole other thing gmo franken food and they're using you know the majority of that for supposed gasoline when there's tons of gas in the earth that we won't even drill for or go after and then not only that then all the free energy stuff that they that they suppress you know so all of this is being done by design so and that food shall be stored to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. Okay, so God instructed Joseph what to do in order so that they, that they would live through these seven years of famine. Because he was obedient to that, both the Jews and the Egyptians lived through that time. Had that not been done, they would have perished off the land. Then you have Proverbs 6, 6, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. So this is wise to do this. It says, which have no guide, overseer, or ruler. I mean, it's not like the queen's down there saying, okay, Jimmy, you go and you get the, uh, 
off the little back 40 there, the little ant back 40, they have little acres of ant stuff. And you plow that up real good and plant the seeds today. No, they, they don't do it that way. They have no guide, no overseer or ruler. Um, provideth her meat, meaning food, in summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So they, they gather it, they get the food in the summer so that when they can get through the winter, which for them would be more like a, a famine type of time, they'll have plenty to eat. Uh, let's go further. And, and again, this doesn't mean you, you go through life obsessed about this either. Like you have to balance it with the verses like where Jesus talked about, you know, take no heed nor for clothing and, 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 and food or drink and this type. I think that's more though in the context of that. I think it's more like obsessing about those things. Like, oh, what am I going to eat next? And what am I going to drink next? And what kind of great clothing am I going to, I think that's more the context there, you know, um, this is more survival that we're talking about from just a physical standpoint. Um, this isn't m more like, oh, okay, I want a hoard, so it's all mine, 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 gimme, gimme, gimme. No, a lot of times I've even said to the Lord, I'm like, you know, who knows? I mean, I might end up, you know, in, in, you might end up giving what you have stored away. I don't know. You know, just it, that's why it's important just to pray that, you know, you're obedient to God no matter what. You're just obedient. You know, whatever he tells you to do. So, then, Proverbs 22, 3, A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. So, a prudent man foresees evil. I'm, 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 that's what this ministry is kind of all about. It's foreseeing evil. And then it says hideth himself, meaning, you know, hiding, hiding yourself, getting out of harm's way. And again, this would be, be a good reason not to be in the cities when things get really bad because of all of the things I've covered in the past and just the obvious dynamic that's going on in the cities. The Bible says, Woe unto them that join house and house and field unto field. Okay, now, what does that imply? Now, it says that in the Old Testament. Look it up. Woe unto them that join house and house, field unto field. Well, house and house would be like a, well, I mean a duplex, but also even worse would be like an apartment complex. And field unto field. And, and we have so much worse of a dynamic of that going on in your major cities. You got people on top of one another. In that environment, it's like sin is just amplified and multiplied. And, and you know, it's just always bad. It always turns into something bad. You never see any big cities that are just puritanically holy. Not saying that every place in the country is either. But it's just a dynamic that's taking place in the cities that's pretty easy to, to, to verify. I mean, you've got, obviously, you don't have abortion clinics out in the middle of the country, typically. You don't have, typically, you don't have strip clubs, unless it's one of those places where it's like, well, this county's not, you know, we don't have strip clubs here, but we got it right over the county line, unless it's something like that. Typically, you're going to have your dens of iniquity. You know, your higher, higher drug use, your drug dealers, your abortion clinics, your, your bars, um, your, your nude bars, you know, your strip clubs and, and, and you know, all of that garbage. You're going to have a lot more of that dynamic going on in, in your cities. Okay. And then the last verse, first Timothy five, eight, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he, so this is more to the men, I believe, because obviously we're talking about man and woman and, and their families. Okay, I think this is more to the men. He hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. An infidel would be like a, somebody that had abandoned the faith, had tasted of the heavenly gift like the Bible talks about in Hebrews and then Active and had had trodden the, the the blood of the of the Lord Jesus Christ underfoot and counted it as an unclean thing, like the Bible talks about in Hebrews. He's worse than that. It says, if you don't provide for your own house, well, what does that mean? Does that mean well, I'm gonna wait till it gets really bad and then I'm gonna provide for my own house? Could it be actually taking preparations to provide for your own house? You don't want to wait. There's so many people that I've even seen like interviewed 
or people on the streets. And these are people that like, yeah, I've got a $2 million 401k and I've got all oh, this big gigantic house mortgaged up to my eyeballs. I've got all of this money tied up on paper and I've got no provisions at all because everything's going to just keep getting gooder and gooder and gooder and just better and better. And, and I'm, I'm good. And I'm not going to rely. Oh, yeah, we got about a week's worth of uh, food supply in the pantry. When they had all of this ability to actually do all of these things ahead of time to provide for their own house, they could have pulled their horns in, not been in this big, gigantic mortgage. They didn't have to have all those nice, fancy cars. They didn't have to have all of their, their nice, fancy jewelry or all this other stuff. And they could have prepared, but they didn't. They chose not to. They chose to live as, as like the rich man, like in the Bible where it says, oh, today I'll have, and I'll, I'll have even more tomorrow, and I'll build bar, bigger barns and all this other stuff. And then God, and I, I'm paraphrasing here, but God comes basically and says, thou fool, this night I will require thee thy soul. You know, and he gets to go to hell for eternity. That's all. It was all about him. It was all about him. See, doing this, if any provide not for his own house, especially they of his own house, Doing that is actually thinking about others. It's not thinking about yourself. Because it would require a sacrifice to do that. You may not be able to have all the nice things. And I'm not, I'm not coming down on my listeners. I, I don't think the majority of my listeners are that way anyway. But if, if you are, this is something that you really want to think about. And there's not very much more time to prepare. I don't believe. And I don't mean... Um, I don't mean doing something where God's clearly given you a mandate and let's say you literally do not have the ability financially to do a whole lot. Well, I'm not condemning you either. God knows your state. He knows where you're at. He knows what you've been given. God can, you know, hide you in the wilderness and have birds feed you if he wants to. I'm not saying he can't do that. I'm not, he, he created the universe. He can protect anybody. I'm saying for those with means to do it, with those that have had the heads up to do it, with those with families those, you know, that could do this, these are verses to think about. I'm not telling you what to do. You do what the Lord Jesus Christ tells you to do. If you don't know what that is, pray and fast about it. That's the best advice I can give you. Don't trust in any man. The Bible says, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and that maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Okay, I don't tell anybody to trust in me. I don't tell anybody to trust in any man or any ministry. I'm not saying there's not good ministries or good men out there. Okay, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, don't put your trust in them. Okay, you put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his word. Okay, so actually going back to the main R report now. Um, a common refrain among Americans when warned that this is what we will see in America, meaning what's happening in Greece, is, quote, it can't happen here. History tells us that not only can it happen here, but it will here we, we have a picture of a shopper standing in an aisle with empty shelves in the supermarket in Athens. This was just yesterday on July 4th. Uh, so they've already got empty empty shelves there. And um, then it goes on to say, When a country goes bankrupt because they spend more than they take in, they borrow money from other countries. When they can no longer make payments on those loans, the economy collapses. That is where Greece is at now, with another bailout, which is borrowing more money than they cannot afford to pay back, total collapse is imminent. Banks are closed, ATM withdrawals are limited, and once again they are planning to raid depositors' money to pay for the necessities. Um, an excellent read on all the subject is called Society's Five Stages of Economic Collapse. I give you, They give you a link here to that report, and it can be found over... Um, at Target of Opportunity, I guess that's the name of the website anyway, but I give you the link here. The similarities of what we are seeing right here in America will astound you. Greece is already in stage four, uh, which is now the economy collapses. There is a rush for everything and the shelves go empty in a matter of hours at stage four. Society falls into chaos. The control of urban areas shifts when violent gangs take over control of the streets and the urban neighborhoods. And that's what I just talked about, the, the study I'd done when, when the music stops, when cities explode in violence. I give you the link to that at the top of this. Um, <clears throat> the government issues restrictive measures in an attempt to control the economy. Everything is in short supply and heavily rationed. Food and gasoline is very expensive and there are very long lines to get them while they are available. Here's a current picture of Greece. Lines outside of the grocery store. There's literally lines outside of the grocery store. 
I don't even know how that works. It's like, like lines just to get in so you can shop. But that's what they're looking at right now. Um, <clears throat> after reading the five stages, ask yourself what stage best describes America. We're going to look at that a little bit next. A look at what is coming to America. America's debt right now is over $18 trillion. Okay, now remember, you've got million, billion, and then trillion. It's over $18 trillion. And that is the last reported number. But it has been frozen at that number for 15 weeks. So it's just getting so unbelievably bad and rogue. And, and Obama's just doing whatever he wants now. It's just like we're under dictatorship. You know, TPP can't know what's in it. We're just going to we're gonna ram it through. It doesn't matter what anybody says. You're all a bunch of ignorant sheeple people that need to be dominated and led by the ruling class. It's basically what's happening. It's basically what they're saying through their actions. Okay, America is showing signs of a partial stage two and three economic collapse right now. Okay, so stage two in the U.S. that we're seeing ever-increasing numbers of people receiving government assistance in one form or another. Oh, that's totally going on. And people are paid not to work. That's going on. Why would they want to do that? Well, they want to give everybody dependent as much as possible on the government. And when you're dependent on the government for everything, you would be you would be dropping yourself into the lower classes, meaning you're you're not capable of self-sustaining, providing for yourself or your family in, in hardly any way, shape, or form. And a <clears throat> heavily dependent public that's heavily dependent on the government is very easy easy to control and manipulate and take away their liberties and freedoms. That's why they want to create that, and that's all part of destroying the middle class of America, which has been one of their main goals for decades. Then, also stage three, which we're seeing in the U.S., which would include foreclosed houses sit vacant and deteriorating by the tens of thousands. <clears throat> Middle class neighborhoods begin to look like slums. The government begins to print currency to pay its bills. Well, begins, that's been going, but, and support the tens of millions uh, on public assistance. Warnings are coming from all directions, financial experts, stock experts, traders, investors. The warnings have been coming for years, but are increasing in frequency and urgency. Despite these warnings, people keep burying their head in the sand and repeating the same themed answers that, quote, it's fear-mongering that hasn't happened yet, and the favorite, it can't happen here. The only reason America's not Greece right this second is because the U.S. Um, dollar is still the world's reserve currency, period. Uh, I said that earlier. That's why we're not in Greece shoes right yet. <clears throat> this means the Fed can continue to print money with nothing backing it up, but that is clear, but that is about over, but it's clear that that is about over as seen by history and world reserve currencies shown in the chart below. And I'm just going to kind of go over this chart. Countries that have held the world reserve currency status range from 80 years to 110 years maximum. Portugal had the world's reserve currency from 1450 to 1530. That was 80 years. And then Spain had it from 1530 to 1640. That was 110 years. The Netherlands then had it from 1640 to 1720, which was 80 years. France had it from 1720 to 1815, which was 95 years. And Britain had it from 1815 to 1920, which was 105 years. For an average of 94 years for the countries that we just talked about. Um, that's, that's the average that any country maintains the world reserve currency status. Okay. Now the U S has held the status since 1920 until present day, 2015, which is 95 years. So we're one year over the average of all those other countries that we just mentioned, as far as on average, how long they'll hold world, world reserve currency status. And we're getting ready to lose it most likely I would say 95% to China. And they've already, like I said, had billboards put up announcing that this is going to be the case. <clears throat> now, so back to the report, Society's Five Stages of Economic Collapse. Here are the last two stages. Number four is the power grab stage. And we already, uh, we already covered some of this, but I'm just going to kind of re-go over it again a little bit. The collapse can transition to this stage at any time after stage three. Most of the middle class have lost everything. What used to be well manicured middle class neighborhoods are filled with carcasses of empty houses damaged and destroyed by vandals. The nation's infrastructure has been seriously neglected. Now this is stage four. This is where Greece is in basically right now. 
Um, nature's infrastructure has been neglected and in need of major overhaul. The power grids become unreliable. Rolling blackouts are a daily occurrence. You can no longer buy or sell gold or own foreign currency. Oh, really? Wow. Like, what happened in, uh, I think it was, was it 33 when, when we were taken off the gold standard and it was illegal to supposedly own gold? <laughs> what, what right does any devil, any government have to tell their citizens that? You know, what, what right do they have? Turn your gold in? <laughs> I mean, that's like, give me a break. What, you, you think you're God or something? You know, that, that's, that's totally insane. But those, those days, unfortunately, are probably coming. Uh, why? Because they wouldn't want you to have anything of worth or value. They wouldn't want to control you lock, stock, and barrel. And they know if you have gold or silver, you can use that as a means of exchange. They, don't, they want to take that away. You know, um, <clears throat> inflation is out of control. And then now the economy collapses. There's a rush for everything and the shelves go empty in a matter of hours. Society falls into chaos. Control of, of urban areas shifts when violent gangs take over control of the streets and urban neighborhoods. Government issues restrictive measures in an attempt to control the economy. Everything is in short supply, heavily rationed. Food and gasoline is very expensive and there's very long lines to get them while when they are available. Affordable quality health care is non-existent and your job is a distant memory. You will do whatever what you are you will do without what you are unable to. To provide for yourself you will discover what it is to live in a third world country which is what they want to turn america into a third world country now i'm not saying this isn't going to happen elsewhere in europe and these these types already like i said it's already happening in greece um <clears throat> stage five liberty freedom and independence are lost this is where the rubber really starts really meets the road now we're getting really down to brass tacks here the government implements martial law fighting between civilians and government forces uh, breakout nationwide, maintaining more than a 30-day supply of food is considered hoarding food and illegal. Again, what on God's green earth do they have any right to tell anybody what they can or cannot have? It's particularly if they have lawfully obtained their provisions ahead of time. You know, that is that is just totally unlawful, satanic, devil behavior. Uh, severe poverty and starvation become a common sight. Now remember, God can protect you from all this. Like I said, we talked about God's protection a lot with those Bible verses we covered. Also, ver uh, Psalms like Psalm 64, where you're asking God to hide you from the secret counsel of the wicked and from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Okay, God can do that. So he's, I don't care what I read here, God's still bigger than all of this. You know, it doesn't matter how, what kind of smart grid they're, they're, they're implementing and how they're monitoring all the phone calls and all the computer stuff and all. You know what? God can still make you invisible if he so chooses. If you've prayed in that regard and, and, and um, have the faith to believe it. Um, the Bible also says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So, I mean, you can't, you can't expect to be living like the devil and for God to protect you is what the whole point there but god can still protect you from all of this i don't care what type of nsa surveillance and fusion centers and all that other garbage god is still bigger than all of that the lord jesus christ and father god are still infinitely bigger than any control grid satan may try to put into place and that's something you always have to believe and maintain in the in the front of your mind because all of this can be like oh i just give up i can't no, you can't, but God can. So, uh, going further here, severe poverty and starvation become a common sight. The government offers marginally acceptable food, water, and shelter in exchange for your freedom, liberty, and independence. Democracy ends in a socialist form of government over takes over under the guise of fixing society's problems with the false promise that peace and prosperity will return better than it was just a few years ago. A totalitarian regime assumes the power and the individual freedoms and liberties once enjoyed by the people are completely eliminated. Stage five is why so many people are worried about, and again, this is where you most likely would not want to be in the cities, particularly when stage four and five hit, you know. If you, at all possible, if God so led you, 
that's when you would really not want to be there. <laughs> um, again, God can still protect you. I'm just saying from a, from a um, you're going to be in the eye of the storm there. Stage five is why so many people are worried about exercises like Jade Helm 15, whether collapse happens during the months the military training exercise is scheduled to take place, or whether, and I, I personally think it's more beta testing. I could be wrong. This, like I said, between now and the start of October could be just like the wildest we've ever seen. And the most, you know, as far as uh, cata cataclysms going on, on, you know, <laughs> political, economic, social, um, weather, you know, earth changes, st stuff of that nature, okay? Um, but I think, I think Jade Helm 15 is, is more beta testing, but I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Or, no. I should say, I hope I'm wrong. Uh, actually, I hope I'm right. It's beta testing. Because if I'm wrong, and it's not, and they're going to go live with it, then obviously that's a really bad thing. Um, hoping that that's not the case. But anyway, whether a collapse happens during the months the military exercises is scheduled to take place or whether the exercise is to make sure the military is prepared for a future event. Um, <clears throat> they are prepared, are you? That's the title of the next part. We have been warned, told to prepare, stock up on necessities like food and water, um, <clears throat> canned goods, medical supplies, batteries, etc. But most people keep putting it off other than taking a few dollars each week and buying things uh, to store up for things like emergencies. Because MSM keeps telling us the economy is getting better, despite the fact that 93,626,000 are not even in the labor force anymore. Those not in the labor force has increased by uh, over 1.5 million in the last year alone. 1.5 million not in the labor force in the last year alone. As has been reported here before multiple times, the super rich are scared and buying up bolt holes with private airstrips to escape if, quote, the poor rise up. And doomsday layers and bunkers are being stockpiled by the elite as they prepare for what is coming. They are already fully prepared for what is coming. Are you, what good is having money in the bank if you will not be able to access it when the economy collapses? Like I said, if you have anything in paper, you can pretty much either kiss it goodbye or, or prepare to see it heavily, heavily, heavily devaluated. Okay. I've been saying that for years. What good is having money in hand to buy necessities if the shelves are all empty as well? By the time the MSM tell you about it, it will be too late. Now, I don't think the majority of my listeners are even in that boat, but if you're a new listener, if, if you haven't, you know, and I'm not telling you what to do, pray fast, do that, okay? Uh, but I am going to tell you what I firmly believe is on the horizon and that, and that I've been predicting, me and a lot of other people have been predicting this for years and years and years, that this is just a matter of time that this is going to have to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and end part one here, and we will go to part two next. God bless you. Scott Johnson's 1,000 plus audio teachings and PDF documents are available for free 24-7 on the internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N d-i-n-g-f-o-r-t-r-u-t-h dot com in addition we also offer a free christian current event and health email newsletter you can sign up at contendingfortruth.com these email newsletters typically only generate about three to six emails per month if you subscribe to both lists please prayerfully help us to continue this work for mail correspondence or to support this ministry our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2359 Highway 70, Southeast, number 321, Hickory, NC, 28602. Or on the internet, a PayPal donation link can be found at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.